While much of the nation was in lockdown, the Virginia football team was locking up some of the best high school recruits in the country. The Cavaliers received nine verbal commitments for the class of 2021 over the last two months. Co-defensive coordinator Kelly Papinga says head coach Bronco Mendenhall was spearheading a change of direction. He was the one that was pressing the envelope continually from the very beginning of let's not relax right now. This is not the time to relax. This is the time to put the uh, foot on the pedal and let's go. Coach Bronco Mendenhall tells me it's unlikely that UVA will find a replacement for VMI in its season opener. That means the Hoos may be facing off against the Hokies at Lane Stadium to kick off the season if football is played at all. Based on the day, based on the minute, um, if I had a ring, like a mood ring, that would probably be as accurate as I could predict. I mean, it changes so fast. Uh, I'm having to prepare, and I've chosen to prepare like we're absolutely playing. In a long-awaited season opener, the Virginia football team picked up a win against Duke here at Scott Stadium on Saturday. The Blue Devils were the fifth different opponent the Hoos had scheduled for their first game of the season. The first four were canceled or postponed. UVA basketball is back in action, but COVID-19 guidelines still linger, making it difficult for fans and businesses. But they are still finding ways to go all out for the Hoos. It's opening day for the Hoos. We're doing whatever we can to support them. It's a weird world out there. They're still national champs. We're in COVID. Clockner Stadium was home to a couple of monster matchups on the soccer pitch on Sunday, as UVA men's and women's soccer teams were both hosting teams ranked number two in the nation. It was a top five showdown for the men as the undefeated and fifth ranked Cavaliers were hosting number two Pitt. In its last 17 games at Klockner, UVA has only lost twice, but both of those losses came against Pitt. The Panthers led 2-0 at halftime. In the 66th minute, Philip Horton carries the ball in. The sophomore sends a pass into the box. Kaya Ignacio will redirect it into the net. The Cavaliers are on the board. They're still down by one with under a minute to play. Off the throw-in, Ignacio sends a backheel pass to Nick Berghold. The redshirt freshman sidesteps the defense and scores near post. That ties the match at two. We're headed to overtime. Early in the first OT, the Panthers have the corner. Arturo Ordonez rifles a header into the goal. That's the game winner. In a battle of top five teams, Virginia Falls 3-2 in overtime. To come back uh, uh, from two goals down against a, a you know a very good pit team. This, this team's ranked uh, second in the country. I actually felt like we were a better team tonight, and playing with a lot of young guys. You hate to lose and drop the points, and it's a, it's a big game. Um, but um, I'm taking a lot of positives away. UVA will be back in action at Notre Dame next Saturday. The 11th ranked Cavalier women were hosting second ranked Florida State. The Seminoles get out to the early lead. In the 11th minute, Leilani Nesbeth scores on the cross. And then two minutes later, Clara Robbins hammers home the goal. It's 2-0. Virginia has a penalty kick in the 34th minute. Alexa Spanster will blast a shot past the keeper. UVA is on the board. Florida State took a 3-1 lead in the halftime thanks to an own goal in the 43rd minute. Same score in the second half. Lizzie Siraki plays the ball from the wing. Check out the diving header from Deanna Ordonez. It's 3-2. In the 64th minute, UVA has the corner. Ordonez is in the mix again. The ball finds the net. It's ruled an own goal, but it counts. The match is tied. Still knotted at 3 in the 81st minute. Florida State has the corner. The ball rattles around in front, and Robbins knocks it in. That's the game winner. The Cavaliers fall 4-3. We played some good soccer at times, not 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 as consistent as we need to be against a team like that. And uh, you know, it's 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 disappointing. Uh, you know, the first half was disappointing, and I think our team fought hard to get back in the game. But uh, at the end of the day, I think the better team won. Virginia will be back in action at Boston College on October 29th. The Virginia football team lost its third game in a row on Saturday as the Cavaliers fell 40-23 at Wake Forest. Virginia dropped to 1-3 and three on the season. The Wahoos were playing without starting quarterback Brennan Armstrong, who missed the game due to a concussion. Former Woodbury four-star Lyndall Stone made his first career start at QB, while Keaton Thompson and Ira Armstead were both subbed in liberally. Stone had the most pass attempts and yards. Armstead went 1-3 for three through the air and also ran for a touchdown. Thompson did not attempt to pass, but he led the team in rushing with 10 carries for 71 yards. 
The transfer from Mississippi State says the constant substitutions were not an issue. With those few plays that we did have, uh, if anything, it's probably simpler. I mean, you know, we play quarterback, so we know the playbook and, you know, are used to having to know everything. But when you break it down, we're going to have, like, you know, a certain section of the playbook, uh, a certain amount of plays. I feel like it's even easier. All plays that were scripted and all plays that are in or our possibilities weren't called. So, um, and they're different types of runners. So, and that doesn't mean that, um, there weren't pass plays and there aren't pass, pass plays for either or both. Uh, but seven yards of rush is pretty good, so um, it seemed to be effective. Virginia will be back in action next Saturday at Miami. Kickoff is set for 8 o'clock. The Virginia Tech football team has moved up three spots to number 20 in the rankings after beating Boston College 40-14 to under the lights at Lane Stadium. The Hokies rush for a season-high 350 yards in the win. They've already crossed the 300-yard plateau three times this season. That's the same number of 300-yard games they had over the previous nine years combined. Virginia Tech running back Khalil Herbert leads the nation in all-purpose yards with 962 yards in four games. Whatever I had to do to help the team win, whether it be catching, blocking, returning, whatever it is, um, you know, I'm going to do it. So, um, you know, if the yards come, they come, but uh, happy to get the dove first and foremost. Virginia Tech will be back in action next Saturday at Wake Forest. Kickoff is set for 3.30. At Clockner Stadium, Mike Shires, NBC 29 Sports. Well, the big question amid all the concern of a coronavirus, one of them, is what will happen with sporting events at UVA. Yeah, the men's basketball team is headed to North Carolina where the ACC tournament is underway. NBC 29's Mike Shires joins us now in studio with a look at how the coronavirus could impact all this. And the show will go on for UVA athletics, at least for now. While the classes have been moved online, sports at Virginia have been unaffected. We reached out to a number of members of the athletic department, but were unable to get anyone to speak on the subject. The games have been going on as scheduled, Baseball played UMass Lowell this morning. Men's tennis took on William & Mary this afternoon. And the 15th ranked Virginia women's lacrosse team is scheduled to host number four Syracuse tomorrow. Basketball games inside John Paul Jones Arena are no longer an issue. The 14,000 seat arena will remain empty with the Cavaliers playing in the ACC tournament in Greensboro this week. The NCAA tournament begins next week and they announced a big decision this afternoon as all NCAA tournament games will be played with quote, only essential staff and limited family attendance. That means no fans, so that's a big change. Uh, giant arenas with just squeaking sneakers running around, up, wow. uh, and then no fans, so it's gonna be a big change. We'll see who exactly is essential. Are cheerleaders essential, the band essential? Right. Yeah. Don't, and a big financial fallout, not just for the NCAA, but all those cities and communities that yeah. were expecting all those tourists to come yeah, in. And they'll just be, uh, I guess you can still go, but you won't be inside the arena, so it won't mm. be the same. Hard to imagine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We've had uh, zero cases attributed to Charlottesville. We've been staying in the same dorm as a football team, eating all of our meals uh, in our rooms, um, and really had almost complete isolation from the outside world. But as students return to grounds, Mendenhall says the bubble is bound to be broken. That, that is what I'm losing sleep over right now. In other news, wide receiver Dontavian Wicks will be out for the season due to an injury that happened last week. Mendenhall also identified running back Mike Hollins as one of the five players who has opted out for the 2020 season. In addition, running back Ronnie Walker's waiver has initially been denied. They sent in an appeal and should know more updates by next week. At Scott Stadium, Riley Wyant, NBC 29 Sports. For the past 12 years, the best high school basketball players in the nation have descended on John Paul Jones Arena for the NBPA Top 100 Camp. Anthony Davis, Ben Simmons, and Zion Williamson all played here, but not this summer. The camp has been canceled due to COVID-19 concerns. Since 1994, the Top 100 Camp has been an annual window into the future of college basketball and the NBA. 2015 was the first time Cavalier fans were able to see Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy together on the court. The future Wahoos were paired up on the Wizards team at the camp. Justin Anderson played there, as did Mamadi Diakite. UVA Class of 2020 signees Reese Beekman and Jabri Abdul-Rahim were at the Top 100 camp last summer. The NBPA will be offering online seminars and discussions for players and their parents this year. The camp was scheduled to run from June 14th through the 19th at JPJ. 
The NFL Draft gets underway this week with the first round on Thursday night. This will be a fully virtual draft with teams making picks either online or on the phone. Just like your fantasy football draft, someone's internet is going to die right before they make a pick, probably the Browns. The grounds crew was able to work on the course throughout the pandemic, so it's in great shape and golfers will be able to tee it up and go with just some minor rule changes. Ben King is one of the top cycling professionals in the United States. He's raced in the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia. He's also a 2007 graduate of Monticello High School. King and his wife lived in the Tuscany region of Italy during the racing season. They were there up until last week when they made the decision to return home to Charlottesville. I did feel like I'd just gone back in time one month. During her time away from the courts, Julia Albaba did some live color commentary for matches on the Pro Challenger Tour, which gave her a chance to work on her tennis announcer whisper. Yeah, so that's something I have to work on, keeping a low voice. The last team to play a game on grounds was the UVA baseball team. The Cavaliers beat UMass Lowell 4-3 to on the morning of March 11th. That was almost three months ago. It'll still be a few more before the game can hopefully get started again, but just because there are no games, doesn't mean the fields are quiet. There are no off days in sports turf management. We're managing a living, breathing organism that either grows or dies. So we have to be in. It's grass doesn't take a day off. With 17 acres of fields and landscapes to take care of, social distancing came naturally to Jesse Pritchard's four man crew. We stay spread out just to be able to accommodate actually getting everything done on all of that land with so few people. Exceptions are made for big projects. On Wednesday, it was deep tine airification at Scott Stadium. The absence of games has allowed Pritchard's team to get a head start on growing, but that's not his preference. I'd rather be hosting a Super Regional this weekend, right? That's what we expected. Birdwood Golf Course in Albemarle County is playing home to the Virginia Hickory Four Ball Tournament, which might make you wonder, what's Hickory Golf? Hickory Golf is golf the way it should be played. It's pure golf. It's a very traditional part of the game. You're not playing to shoot super low scores. You're playing to hit quality golf shots. And when you do hit the golf shot, you know it was you that accomplished it and not the tool. These golfers are keeping the history of the game alive. It's golf that extends all the way back to the earliest origins of golf in Scotland. 